Patrick. Okay. Well, we have a live in-studio tech corner for you today, and that means that Dirk, you're in a moment here going to teleport across our expansive studio, and he's going to show it to you. So he's going to do that in a minute, and whilst he does that, I'm going to let you know a little bit about the, uh, the tech corner equipment today that is going to come to us from the Mark 10 Corporation. Uh, they're located in Copenhagen, New York, and this is their latest product. It's their WT3. 2001M motorized wire crimp pull tester. And to give you all the details, I'm not going to throw it back to my partner. So Dirk, take it away. Okay, thanks Mike. Uh, yeah, so as Mike said, this is the, uh, right here in front of me, uh, is the WT3 201M wire terminal tester. We have had wire terminal testers from uh, Mark 10 before in the studio. Um, oh boy, it's probably been a uh, year or so. Except it was a manual tester. Uh, the way a manual tester works is you put your, you put your wire, let me grab a wire here, is uh, you, you put your wire in the tester, you pull down a lever, it stretches the wire, and uh, the wire eventually breaks. Uh, the tester measures the, uh, uh, the breaking point, uh, checks whether it's between the, your programmed upper and lower limits, and displays a pass or fail, and sends the data computer. All that. So this is basically the same thing, except it's automated. Now what this does is rather than a lever pulling down and stretching the wire, you've got a cam that, and the cam is right inside here, you can see it on the gauge cam kind of, it pulls the wire, but the thing is it pulls it at a constant rate. And that is important, because if you think about the way a manual tester works, you might have one operator come in, they may yank down on the lever, the other one may come in and just gently pull down on the lever. So you get a lot of variance in the operator themselves. This takes the operator out of the picture. Now it just works, pulls at a constant rate, which can be programmed, so you, can, you might have a fast rate for some tests, a slower rate for other tests, and it takes all the variation out of it. Now I'll show you how this, how this might work. I've just got a, a uh, uh, and we'll get to some other features, but this isn't in an uh, automated mode right here. So I'm just gonna put my, my wire in here. I'm gonna hit start. Let me zero that out. It's gonna grab that wire, it's gonna pull it, it's going to pull it until it breaks. And as soon as it breaks, as soon as it breaks, the test is over. It shows me on my display here uh, my peak that it read. It also gives me a pass because it was within my programmed limits. And then it automatically resets itself. Now, I have it set to automatically reset. You don't necessarily have to do that. Um, uh, you can have it wait until you manually reset it. You can do it that way. I have it to automatically reset. So this is how you typically might use this. You would just keep putting, you would just keep putting wires in here and breaking them, seeing if they're within your units, uh, within your upper and lower limits. Uh, and you obviously, this is a destructive test, so you're going to be using samples. But this unit, because it's automated, can do a couple other things which are pretty intriguing. So I'm going to go into my menu here, and I'm going to set up a different type of test. This one is called a pull to load. So in this case, Rather than, rather than pulling until the wire breaks, it's going to pull until the, wire re and, until the wire reaches, or the tension reaches, a predetermined load. If it makes it that far, it goes, it passed. So it doesn't pull it until it breaks, it pulls it until it reaches the load, and then says, okay, you're good. So let's see what that looks like. I'll put this in here, and... Let that go. Now, if you watch the display, it's going to ramp up, then it slows down. 42. 42 is what I had programmed that pulled a load to. We see we hit, hit it. We see the green check mark. That means it passed. And now we're reset, ready for the next test. Now, there's a variation on this. Let me get another wire. There's a variation on this. I'll go back to the menu. And this is called load holding. Some standards require some standards require that um, that not only do you pull to a load, but then you sit and hold that load for a certain amount of time. That basically what they're, what they're testing is that it's not good enough that you just reach the load and you're good. You have to be able to sustain that load for a certain amount of time. And you can program this to be whatever you want. I've programmed it for 10 seconds. So let's see what might happen here. So I'm going to put this in. I'm going to start my test. Whoops. Ah. Okay, start my test. It's going to pull to my predetermined load, which is 35 pound force, and it's going to sit there and it's going to hold it for 10 seconds. And as long as it lasts for 10 seconds and doesn't break, it's passed. And there you go. So it passed. 
So those are a couple of the things that you can do with an automated tester that would be almost impossible to do with a, with a manual tester. Now there's a few other things that you can do with this unit. It does a whole lot of stuff. I, I don't have time to run through all of it. Um, it is hooked to a computer. If we go to the, okay, now we're going to go and look at the software that you would typically use uh, with this gauge. This is the Measure Light software. This particular software is fairly straightforward. All it's doing is capturing the data, allows you to export all of your data once you're done to Excel. Uh, from Excel, you could either analyze it in Excel or you could uh, you know, bring it into another, uh, say, more advanced uh, SPC software to do uh, more data analysis. There's also another type of software um, I think it's called Measure Gauge, which gives you a lot more functionality than Measure Light does. For most people, Measure Light is fine. It's really just data collection because you're really just going to export it and use it somewhere else. Uh, if you're not hooked to a computer, uh, most people are, you can use this unit on its own. Uh, you could take it out to the production floor. You can capture up to 4,800 units in it, um, sorry, measurements in it, then take it back to your computer and download it into Measure Light or, or Measure Gauge and do your analysis uh, if you need to do that. So 4,800 uh, 4, samples you can take with this. Um, what are some other options? Uh, you can optionally do a date and time stamp on all of the data. Uh, that's an option for it. So the base, uh, the base price for this, it's pretty inexpensive, honestly, for a unit of this type. It's $39.50 for the base unit as you see it here. If you want to get all the options, uh, you can buy the options separately or you can buy a whole package of options for $18.50, uh, $1,850. Um, I, I mentioned the pull to load option, the load holding option. There's also a profiles option. If you're testing a lot of different types of wires, a lot of different types of terminals, you might want to be able to save the test parameters for those. And you can do that with profiles. You can save them out, a uh, different profile for each type of test, then the user can bring those back in and, uh, and set up the test very quickly rather than having to manually go in and set it. So again, this is the wire terminal tester from Mark 10. This is the model WT3 201M. If you want more information on it, you can click on the link below the player page. That should take you out to the page on the Mark 10 site that is specific to this, uh, specific to this unit and uh, learn more about it. And thanks to Mark 10 for sending this uh, along to us. We appreciate it. Back to you, Mike. All right, well, there you go. That is the model WT3201M uh, wire crimp terminal tester, as Dirk said, from Mark 10 Corporation, Copenhagen, New York. Thank you again to Mark 10 for sending that to us. Dirk, yep. good job on the on the Tech Corner, as always. You, you always do such a fine job on those. You, oh, sure, yeah. You, you're, it's it's, awesome. it's have, awesome. I'm brilliant. You have that I'm kind brilliant. of a mind. I, I don't know what kind of a mind that is exactly, <laughs> but it's the kind you have. Well.